Um, I heard the word out on the street. A few people are a little bit nervous about Big Quiz number one coming up. But you guys have been rocking and rolling. Man, we're doing marginal analysis. You guys have been doing applying uh, expected value, present value. Um, we got some game theory going on. We took a look at PPF, but a few people are a little bit nervous because we haven't talked about circular flow diagrams. And um, we still got Monday for that. We'll do a little bit more with PPF and circular flow diagram. But some of you feel like, hey, I want to take advantage of the weekend so that I am ready to rock and roll on the big quiz. And I feel like I need to already know the stuff so that Monday's more review than it is learning something new. I hear you, man. Circular flow is pretty easy. So I'm going to try to keep this brief, so I might go pretty fast, but like I said, at least it's been introduced to you. You feel like it's not something new, and maybe some of the little uh, more the nuances will, will sink in for you in Monday's kind of a review. So what do you say? Let's do circular flow diagram. Really, the circular flow diagram is just a way of trying to model the economy. We're going to make a model, a representation, a diagram that kind of explains the, re the key relationships and how the economy works. Now, it's a circular flow diagram because we're going to get these flows that go round and round in the economy. The economy is moving round and round. Now, the two key institutions, and we'll add some more later. We've talked about that, how we kind of simplify models, try to understand what's going on, and then we add on some of the complexity. We'll add on to this, you know, government, and we'll add on some other things. For right now, let's keep it real simple. The two key institutions in the economy are households and firms, okay? Households and firms are the key decision makers and they make the decisions about consumption and production now when you think about that it's pretty easy to see which institution is in charge of which thing households make the decisions about consumption firms make the decisions about production that sounds pretty straightforward right now we're gonna put that in a diagram so let's just jump right into a diagram here you guys on your worksheet you have some diagrams like this with A B C D there okay now this, the, the, each of the questions will tell you, hey, there's some, it gives you some information. Now, I intentionally made it so every diagram you're looking at and analyzing is different. Because it's not about memorizing a diagram out of a textbook. It's about understanding the relationships. You can pick up any circular flow diagram, regardless of how an author has drawn it. You understand the underlying relationships of that. Okay, So that's the key point. Okay. Now, what do we want to put in the diagram? Like we said, there are two key institutions, firms and households. And they're on each side of the, uh, of, of the economy, one in charge of consumption, the other in charge of production. So if you take a look there at the diagram. This one says the Yasukochi Farms, right? It's a farm. What do they do? Production. They produce goods and services. Okay. So Yasukochi Farms is there, and it says that's in box A. If if they're in box A, who's on the other side of the economy taking care of consumption decisions? They're making Yasukochi Farms, and A is making production decisions. But over in C, that's the households. Households deciding whether or not to buy their produce. Okay, So that produce, they go, hey, we need some produce. We want to consume that. We're going to make that decision. Fair enough. A, firms. C, the households. Okay, Hey, we're halfway done. Pretty easy, huh? All right. I'm telling you, it is. It's not. This is a simplified circular flow diagram. And we'll build on this. And it'll help us get a better uh, understanding of how the economy works. Okay? Now, so now that we got houses, or I'm sorry, households and firms on our diagram, we got to look at how they interact. Because there's not going to be consumption without production. And you see what I'm saying? So there's going to be some interaction. So households and firms, how do they interact with one another? I think the easiest way to realize that is if Yasukochi Farm is getting produce, we just said a household, okay, the Mecham household is going to decide, hey, I need some produce. I need fresh lettuce. Okay, I'm going to go. Where am I going to go? I'm going to go to the market. What's the market? Market is a place where buyers and sellers get together to buy and sell goods and services. And there's all kinds of markets. It's not always a physical location. Sometimes it's the farmer's market. Maybe that's where Yasukochi Farms takes their produce. Maybe they have their own market. Maybe they sell it to a supermarket where we go. Maybe they sell it online. I can go online and order it and have it delivered. Who knows? But any place where buyers and sellers get together to make transactions, that's part of the market. Okay? And we'll talk more about markets as we go. But for now, let's remember, there's a market for lettuce. There's a market for bananas. There's a market for cars. What we're looking at is the market for all of the goods and services produced by all of the different firms. 
and there's going to be consumed by a number of different households. But we're kind of just putting those all in a category here. So what's that interaction going to look like? Well, I'll tell you what, on this problem here, it tells us that the circle labeled D, the one there on the bottom, okay, it says that's the market where the company sells its products. So A is the firm, oops, I'm above you, A is the firm, and they're going to sell their goods over here in D. Well, that's where they're going to sell their goods, down to D. Well, the households are going to do what? They're going to come from C, they're going to come down and visit D and buy themselves some lettuce. So D is the markets for goods and services. That's where the buyers and sellers from A and C, they go down there and they meet in D so they can make those transactions. Now, we haven't filled out a whole circular flow, though. We only dealt with the bottom part. What's going on on the top part? Where do those households get the money to be able to buy goods and services? they got to go to work. In other words, they got to sell their labor. Hey, we're flipping roles here. Down in the markets for goods and services, down there in D, the firms are the sellers of goods and services, but households are the buyers. But now as we go up here to D, or I'm sorry, to B, it's the households that are selling their labor, and they're selling labor to the firms because the firms need some workers. They need someone out there working in the fields. They need someone cleaning the lettuce, getting it ready to ship off, okay? Uh, picking the lettuce, tilling the land, all kinds of different work. So they're going to hire labor. Now, they also might want to use some machinery, some tractors. They're going to have to rent those from someone. Maybe they rent them from another company. But who owns that company? A household. At the end of the day, every, every company, the owners, belong to a household. So in the end, all of the labor, the capital, the machinery, tools, the land, it's owned by some household that is lending it or renting it to the firms so they can use those factors of production, those resources they need to produce the goods and services that they do. So in this market, the factors markets, then the firms are going to be the buyers. They need to buy labor so they can produce goods and services. Households are going to be the sellers. So that kind of tells us what's going on there in B. B is going to be the markets for the factors of production. Now, we need to do a little bit more here, and that is to recognize, and on the problems you'll see, there's two circles going around there. That, that dotted line is the money flow. Because there's money being transacted, right? In the markets for goods and services, households are going to take and give money to the firms in exchange for that lettuce. But then money's going to go from the firms to the households to pay for the labor. And that's going to keep going around. Because when they pay one household that works for them, they pay them income. They pay them some money. That's their income from their labor. They go and they spend it to buy something else. Maybe not lettuce, maybe, some, uh, maybe oranges then that firm makes some money that they use to pay their workers. And so the round and round it goes. That's the essence of the circular flow diagram. But we need to see which direction the flows go in. And so in this case, we said money goes in the market for goods and services. Money goes from the households to the firms. And we said the households were in C. So I'll put a, little, a few arrows here. I just made a little a goof here. But we'll fix that. There you go. So C is the households, and they're giving money to the firms through the markets for goods and services. But then the firms give money to the households through B, the markets for the factors of production. So see that? The money flow is circling around the economy. Now, what's going the opposite direction? That's the real stuff. you got money going one way. But in the other direction, you've got goods and services going from the firms to the households in the markets, through the markets for goods and services. But then in the markets for the factors of production, you've got labor and other factors of production going from the households to the firms and money going the other direction. That's a circular flow diagram. Now, as you guys go through the worksheet, you guys can check yourselves against the key there. You'll see that we move them around. Sometimes I put households on top. That means firms is on bottom. We've got to figure out where they are. Because my focus, like I said, is not memorizing, but recognizing and understanding relationships. All right? We'll see you guys on Monday.